So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects in an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-whips pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. consecutive week of cinema psyops i'm your host court the guy who's trying his best to put on his fucking game face for this episode while worried very much about his loving and adorable cat mac but joining me all the way across the city of omaha to try and distract me for the length of the episode is my co-host matt hi everyone we we have a new intro i like it (laughs) yeah we had that last week and it's probably going to even change from the version that you just heard tonight because i'm not done with it yet all right man well the whatever you got going in there i'm i'm for it it's it sounding really good <laughs> well i'm i'm glad I'm, I'm really glad thank you very much uh for the vote of confidence on that and i've had some other folks that have really liked it and everybody that's been involved with it so far that has heard it has also liked it i just ah. i just haven't gotten it to the uh levels that i want yet necessarily and some of the effects that are on some of the vocals i need to change around a little bit but it's gonna mostly be relatively undetectable for just about Ooh. everybody else but you know yeah the Who's people that spelling out our name believe it or not that is and a very special thank you to the lollygaggers volleyball team that both of our wives are on oh no shit yeah 
Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I went over to their volleyball game and actually recorded them doing that cheer for me. Oh, well, believe that's it or, a good time. Believe it or not. Yeah. And uh, after I had them do that cheer, I then came back and started working on the music and some of the other stuff. So, I mean, it's a bunch of different stuff. And that all came together within a matter of just two or three days. <laughs> well, fucking hey, man. Good job. Yeah. And uh, special thanks and to thank you, ladies. Yes. Special thanks to the Lollygaggers. Extra special thanks to Ryan Lewis, who did the intro there yes. with that disappointed. Uh, like gumshoe dad type guy who I know man I loved it though that was some <laughs> fucking excellent uh, stuff going on yeah he delivered that perfectly and with the vocal effects and everything it sounds exactly as I wanted it in my head so very much thank you to Ryan Lewis and I believe it was Grave Shift Radio was the, the show that he's on and he's another one of those podcasters that I tried to bring out of retirement or get them to get the bug again by having them do mm-hmm. an intro for us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would. Yeah, that's a that's a voice that needs to be heard. Well, yeah, I I fucking love his voice, and he was sick. He had just gotten over con crud or was starting to get over con crud, and his voice hurt, and he still recorded yeah. that for me, and that's Damn. how it turned out so gruff and that's, sounding that's as awesome a man as it did. Right there. Yeah, he really helped us out, and the lollygaggers took time out of their drinking and volleyball playing to do that cheer for me. They did it several times. They shouted extremely loud in a you know parking lot just outside of their volleyball game where everybody was looking at us like we're insane. <laughs> So thank you to everybody that helped us make that theme song happen. Now, this week, we are talking for the 314th consecutive week of Cinema PsyOps. We are talking a Laura Jemsner film, Emmanuel in America. This might be the Laura Jemsner film. <laughs> there is a lot of Laura There's a lot in this. to unpack with this film. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of shit to talk about. And holy fuck, I can't believe like, we got the show that we got here. Yeah, this is like six different exploitation genres in one movie it's it's something well that's joe damato for you and this is a mondo macabro release that we're talking about here so that is definitely something uh we need to discuss a little bit more print wise and everything like that because mm-hmm. mondo is one of those uh, boutique labels that i happen to love a great deal and really dig their work and i want to support them so i want to keep bringing that up and i want to talk about all the positive things about this in spite of everything else i may or may not have to say about what's going on in this film because there yeah it's it's all over the place and this movie is there's a there's a lot of stuff going on here (laughs) unfortunately there is not a trailer so here is the legion patreon ad and we'll come back with some music i snagged right out of the film all right this will keep you quiet (laughs) oh hi there i didn't see you you call me cutting a new show i'm bo ransdell and i'm one of the many creators you can find on legion podcasts I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room.
It helps when the sex scenes don't have the sound of wet mud being stomped by a boot that's also wet. Yes, that's uh, that helps with uh, at least having the music in there. <laughs> I know for my sake, it certainly does. And there was quite a bit of those softcore and then hardcore and then back to softcore weird scenes that were going on in the film, which unfortunately there's no trailer. So let's just dig in. Emmanuel right. in America! Well, Emmanuel in America! First 20 minutes. Let's start it out. Well, we got Laura fucking Gemzer, and she's in New York. Uh, she's taking pics of some nude models. It, 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 let's just get it out of the way now. Thanks, movie. Yeah. And, and we'll end it right there, because every other scene is a thanks movie. Yeah. Multiple actresses from several different Italian films that have had cameos are now in this film as models in some way, shape, or form, or the sex slaves we'll be talking about later, and other things yeah. that were just insane, so... Just in general, if you're into female nudity, this is the film for you. And then also for those of you that are into male nudity, this also has some good eye candy for you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, all of that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, one of the girls mentions towards the end of the shoot that she has a new boyfriend, but the dude won't put out and uh, she's, uh, she's starting to crawl up the walls. Well, Laura's driving home and a man pops up from her back seat to the car with a gun and he says he wants to kill her and to pull over to the side. Well, she does. They talk. That's our first clip. Your point. Just take a look around you. The people in the street. Can't you see what people are coming to? Can't you see they're heading for disaster and nobody realizes it? No more values. No more ideals. There's no morality left. By killing you, I'll give the world a lesson in morality. I'm sorry, but how do I come into it? Look at that photo. That's Janet. And she's an angel. But she's heading for damnation as well, and it's all your fault. You are evil. You stimulate the basest, most inhuman instincts in people. Sex, shame, hell and damnation. Hey, listen. If we could talk about it, maybe I could understand it better. I bet you could explain it all to me. An executioner ought to know his victim before he kills her. How you describe me to the judge? I'm not afraid of a trial. I'm innocent. I'll tell how I eliminated the symbol of sex and the judges will thank me for it. But I will let you have a second or two to repent your evil ways. Thank you. That's really nice. You're Tony, aren't you? How did you know that? Janet was talking about you. She's so in love with you. Don't talk about Janet. She was pure. And now she's dirty. You corrupted her with sex, but now I'm going to redeem her by killing you. Then I'm going to marry her, and she's never going to have to take her clothes off ever again. Why are you looking at me like that? You think I'm crazy, don't you? No, I don't. Not at all. I was thinking you're really nice, and Janet's a simple girl. There is nothing sinful about undressing in front of a camera. It's a job like any other, Tony. But you are sinful. You don't take pictures of children or flowers. All you know about is sex. And sex is the cause of all the disasters of this century. But, Tony, have you ever made love? Never. I'm pure. But once when I was a child, I saw my mother. It was shameful, and I'll never forget it. You're right. Sometimes sex is shameful. Corruption, prostitution, but not always. When it happens naturally, freely, then it's a vital force. It's happiness. It's cleanliness. It's love, even if it lasts only a moment. Get away. Please, wait. Okay. What an incel fuck. Number one, nerd alert. Number two, yeah, he's an incel fuck. Number three, uh, when he says, please don't wait, it's because Lord Jumpster is going to start blowing him. And he doesn't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> this was kind of rapey and weird. And she basically resolves the issue with him being sexually repressed by just going ahead and like molesting him. That was the yep, thing that in, she did. In her defense, she was he was going to kill her. Right. He so had a gun to you, her. But like, you have a complete right, I think, to do whatever you want not to be murdered. That's fair. But this is just such a weird, bizarre scene and sequence. Oh, yeah. It's fucking to start the movie off with. Definitely. You don't get eased into anything. Yeah. Joe D'Amato has a really weird sense of humor because this is all dark, twisted humor that like you would see with Lloyd Kaufman doing later on with like some of the they had a thing where it was like those whole through line in and film that you 
actually saw, but uh, Terra Firmer, there was a thing where like a, a victim would sexually assault back their rapist and take the power from them was the idea. And that's kind of what she's doing is she's emasculated him by showing him that she fears not his weapon, but would gladly accept his weapon if you catch my drift. And that somehow like won the day and saved her life. And it's just really disturbing that that's how they chose to do it. I, I, yeah, I don't I don't doubt you there. I'm just saying it's, you know, listen, your life's on the line. You do what you have to to live. Right. All right. I'm not saying that I have an issue with her as a character doing this. It's just that the movie itself, it's a really bizarre way of doing what they're trying to do. That's what I'm getting at. That agree. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, he runs away because uh, he's an incel. And uh, later on, she's talking to her. I, she doesn't really consider any person her main person. But I guess one of her favorite people, whose name's Bill. Um, so he's looking at the gun that the kid left behind. And sure enough, it's fully loaded. But she's not going to report him. She thinks she scared him straight. And maybe even helped out her friend in the process. Well, then those two go ahead and have sex. So there you go. Uh, be, as you do. As you do. So, uh... This is like her long-term boyfriend, but they have this really bizarre sort of almost open relationship. It's definitely open. Yeah. It's open because he also... Work comes first for him always. He even said he'll never stay in one place. He, he likes her a lot, uh, is infatuated maybe even with her, but his work will always come first to him, and she's very much a marriage is bullshit. Uh, even monogamous relationships are bullshit to her. Uh, no one controls her. She'll never be tied down to anything. She's free. She's a like, hedonist. The, ultimate yeah. freedom. She is. Yeah. She is totally a hedonist, and she doesn't want to have any like strict rules or belief structures put into anything that's going to do with her pleasure. She wants yes. that left alone. Which, fair enough, cool. And you know, the, these two have probably the healthiest of all relationships in the film. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely say so, yeah. But oh, it's yeah. still just a bizarre thing because they, they have this humor in there with their interactions where they're constantly just fucking with each other and teasing each other. And like they don't even take serious the fact that she was almost murdered. Like, no. Well, she doesn't. She takes almost nothing serious in this movie until the end. <laughs> Really? Yeah, but even then, like, nothing's real. Like, everything about this film is not taken seriously. You can tell in, like, the way that they're doing the storytelling. Yeah. And they just want you to come along and have a good time. But, like, the subject matter that they chose to come along and have a good time with just doesn't work for me, is what I'm getting at for trying to have get, us come along and yeah. have a good time. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're not, I mean, but we are sensitive 90s males. So. <laughs> um, sure. Let's uh, let's dig further into the movie and we'll talk about it more we once are, we get there. We are awake. As the kids say. So, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, then she later on meets her friend Joe up in a boxing arena and she wants, she's getting the, the drop on a story on a real big kind of bad dude, uh, that she's trying to infiltrate. So not only is she a photographer, uh, but she is also a, um, a, a, a news investigator. So anyway, she meets this henchman that Joe mentioned, and uh, the girls only are called by their signs by this guy. And, you know, so they she's a Virgo, so she gets a thing, and then all of a sudden she bones the henchman because, you know, why the fuck wouldn't you? Uh, so he leaves, and she sneaks a camera into the bracelet with her Virgo thing on there. Uh, that because all the girls have to wear this bracelet. Well, she runs. Yeah, it's all about their astrological signs, and he wants one of every astrological sign. Apparently, apparently. Well, she walks around. She finds. Uh, she finds and takes pics of these of guns hidden in horseshoe containers. And um, the henchman finds her, doesn't catch her taking pictures, and takes her to the pool, where there are all the ladies that this guy apparently, you know, quote unquote, runs, and they're all nude and swimming, and all right. As we've uh, said before, thank you, movie, there is tons you. of female nudity for I those mean, that are into Jesus that. Jesus Christ, it's it's there. Uh, the boss will call on her when he wants her, so just hang out here. Well, Manuel hangs out with the ladies. She uh, gets in uniform for that pool area, which uniform is nothing but a thong bottom with the sign that they are on it. And uh, they're all hanging out. And then uh, some of the other girls are meeting her. And then one of the girls hears a, a horse start neighing and she gets concerns and walks off and that's going to come up later. Let's not walk all over that place. Um, so, uh, <laughs> 
Let's save that. That's that's a special moment. Uh, anyway, so uh, then some girls are in the pool. So they, uh, Manny Wilde gets in the pool and with two other ladies, and uh, they uh, they all just get full on naked, and uh, they they just, I mean, they frolic, and that's the end of the first twenty minutes. And frolic, you, I mean, you see a lot frolic. Okay, so it's still somewhat softcore pornography, but we're getting yeah. full frontal female nudity in the we're swimming full scene. There. Every nudity, yeah. yeah, yeah, right for females, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, um, and and particularly underwater sequences where yeah. um, it's it's so it's, it's, so it's art. Yeah, I guess you could say that it's like a soft core sex scene that they're doing with all of the ladies in the pool enjoying each other, which is they're allowed to pleasure each other, but the men who work there on this facility are not allowed to touch the women without the boss's permission. Yeah, and then the boss can pretty much have his selection of women, and they're all being paid to be here. Yes. Um, and maintained in some way, shape, or form. So he's like and using that, money that to actually control have them. a clip on that coming up later. So yeah. if you want to hold off on that. Sure. I just the boss really does explain kind of what they're doing there. So right, but like we kind of got an idea of what's going on because Laura Gemsner's character of Emanuela is learning this as she's going undercover. So really what she is is like this adventure reporter for Lifestyles of the Rich and Shameless almost in this film. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean she seems to be an investigative reporter because it's also this guy deals in guns and shit. So it ain't just some rich playboy running around. He's he's fucked up, man. But yeah, she's <laughs> she's digging into like the darker side and almost yeah, like a sex trafficking kind of world. He's into some real heavy shit though. Those are some real weapons right, right there. And they're dealing with some very serious stuff, but they're doing it in such a tongue in cheek and kind of, you know, Emmanuel's not really in danger and we know this blah blah blah. It, it's like the the mentality of a pornographic film where they're trying to just entertain you and like you know the stakes aren't all that high because all this really is is just supposed to be sex. But yeah. then when they're telling you the stories of the things that are supposed to be the stakes are high, they take it like they normally would a regular film. So this like uneven jumping around tone really kind of makes it hard to draw a beat on the film and how to be entertained and enjoy it. And it's just best to just like watch the film and just let it be because the more let you try be, to I think mean, about it, the less it's going to make sense and the more frustrated you're going to be. Also a metric fuck ton of dialogue in this. I'll just tell you, like, real talk, man. I right. have so many fucking clips in this movie. And all the story is essentially done through dialogue as well. So, And if that's the first yeah. 20 minutes, let's just keep moving then. All right. So the next 20 minutes, uh, we cut to uh, Laura's relaxing, and she meets the boss. And he's a... Uh, listen, I don't like to comment on people's looks, but he is one fugly looking motherfucker um <laughs> there is a reason why some folks have to pay for sex yeah no you're not wrong uh so anyway then he says you know we'll get to know each other better later and he walks off and feels up another lady telling her not to stay in the sun so long then he walks to one of his guests and kind of explains more what happens there and that's our next clip well my dear duke Oh, the you know, you're the only guest yeah, I've had that hasn't taken advantage of the facilities. Yet you're one of the most refined persons I know. What is it that uh, isn't your taste? You mean why don't I accept one of your girls? Because I'm used to different relationships, the more traditional ones. So you're still attracted by the chase, eh? A waste of energy. I say save your strength for the important things. Like power, for instance? Well, why not? I'm willing to fight for power. But love, no. Why do you question the market values, like everything else? What about sentiment? You can express emotion, sentiment in countless ways. Love, hate, and I want something different from women. With these ladies, you can have anything you want. Each is different, suitable for a different state of mind. And with them, you can experience any kind of eroticism. Now I'm going to show you something very unusual. But... Who knows? Maybe it'll make you change your mind. Every one of them has been chosen for a different specialty. Come on, dude, there's got to be something that turns you on. Why are they servicing you? What are they thinking? And what do you want them to think? They're happy to give themselves an exchange for the money they get. They move around the world in luxury hotels, they drink champagne, caviar, refined foods, and their only responsibility is to satisfy a man. And themselves too, of course. Step closer. For anything else, number one, uh, we now know why the ladies are there. And number two, we see the lady from before who was concerned about the horse. Well, she strips down in a stable with the horse, and to put this as delicately as I possibly can, and in which I'm the only one allowed to do so, um, she jacks off a horse. 
<laughs> and that's as delicately as I'm putting it. She jacked off a fucking horse, Court. <laughs> yes. Um, court. Yeah. Court. And we see a horse dick. Yeah. Fake. Fake. But she still jacks off a face ho- fake horse dick. And Court, I just I want I want you to know this. We are tentatively thirty. Two minutes into this movie, and a horse is getting jacked off. Are you sure that that was fake? You know, I'm not sure of anything. You're, you're, you can be completely right. I just, uh, who knows, man? But that horse was way calm. If that was, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what was happening there. Uh, anyway, she jacked off a horse. This horse sex is a thing. It fucking is a thing in this movie. It definitely is a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that is. was a bit horrifying to witness after uh, everything else um, we've already <laughs> yeah. kind of discussed. Uh, I wasn't a hundred percent sure that it was fake, but at the same time, like. I wasn't sure exactly if we were supposed to believe that she was bringing the horse, you know, full, full, full fledged term or, or yeah. whatever. And apparently this is a show that she performs for everyone because everyone on the island was watching her. And this is just another one of those. Into it yeah, too. This is another one of those like shortcut things to show you just how weird and twisted these folks lives are where everyone is just watching this as if it's a normal thing and not something that you had to pay extra money in Tijuana to do. Yeah. You know, and they're just it's all interspecies of erotica <laughs> right and they're all just having like this good time watching her do it and even like laura jemser's character is like yeah that seems like fun cool i'm glad she had a good time and yeah. and they're playing this stuff all off once again like mostly for laughs we're supposed to believe that like these are the lives and crimes of people in epstein style circles that you know yeah. are super rich and use this money to traffic in human lives in some mm-hmm. way shapes or forms and then we watch this woman jerk off a horse she she Click. jacks off a horse yeah yeah <laughs> it's just I mean I, I didn't even know I even wrote down let me put this as delicately as I can yeah she jacks off a horse yeah that's a, I mean there's uh, yeah and all of this is clips and it's just it's really fucking weird and let's just yeah. move on yeah yeah yeah. all right so because the film does the film doesn't give you time to process no, it we're it on to the next you, thing I I had to pause it I, I paused it because I needed to take some time to wrap my head around the fact that I just wanted a woman jack off a horse. Well, that and you had to towel off. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, no, it was kind of just for show at that point. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell you, it was, uh, that was something. I don't, I never, yeah, no, man. All right. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, it was certainly anyway. disturbing and uncomfortable and let's just move on because not yeah, even our I, audience wants to hear any more about that. <laughs> Well, too fucking bad. If I had to see it, they gotta hear about it. That's just the way the show works. So anyway, later on, uh, Emmanuel is in a steam room, and the lady who kind of got felt up earlier about being out in the sun, she says the boss hasn't, you know, given her the chain lately, which the chain means you're gonna be with the boss, and she's kind of freaking out. So Laura fucks her to calm her down because she she just needs to be felt up. This was one of those uh, actresses that I recognize from a ton of other yeah, movies. She was I've seen her before. She yeah. she usually plays like the prison warden or one of the sadist type chicks that's in these films. Uh, like in uh, either a prison warden or a Nazi soldier. She was in the SS girls. I think she was the one that was in charge. And then I think she ran the prison in the women's prison massacre or one of the other uh, films that we yeah. did from Matei that starred Laura Jemsner that they filmed them back to back. She was in that one as well. Uh, and then also Ruggiero Diodato's um, uh, House on the Edge of the Park. She was one of the uh, guests at the house that uh, David Hess and uh, Giovanna Lombardo Radici were uh, getting all skeezy and weird on and, and sexual and rapey and torturous and, and all that. So oh, yeah. <laughs> she's yeah, been in a ton go. of stuff that everyone's seen. So it's good that we mention her now. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, later on, uh, Laura is she got the chain and she's talking to the boss. And that's our next clip. When you hung the medallion around my neck, I thought I was going to faint with happiness. Your power and riches. Your will, your gaze. They dominate the world. Your wonderful body is to be worshipped. You can ask whatever you want of me, provided that your hands touch me, caress me. Wait! Don't you want to whip me first? To see me suffer? To make me feel your power, your strength? Suppose I told you the truth. You're just a poor guy like so many others. In spite of all your money. Poor Eric Van Deren. What sort of a man is someone who's never known real love in his life? 
who's always been forced to buy everything. Power, orgasms, success. Shut up, stupid bitch. I think you're afraid of women. Women that speak terrify you. They might destroy you. Oh, poor Eric Van Deren. You can do anything now. Only you just can't let yourself go without help. This is a dangerous game of yours, but I like it. Something new. I didn't know Virgos were like that. And suppose it isn't a game. I'm the boss and you know it. I'm paying for this, so don't provoke me. It's going to be fun for me to tame you. A new diversion. It's going to be a pleasure, my dear. Are you so sure you'll succeed? I succeed in everything I do. I know. That's why I came here. All right. She calls him out about everything he is. So Yeah, and he explains basically all of it and how it actually is, and then he gets kind of turned on by the fact that she is belittling him and be- degrading him, and then he turns the tables and becomes kind of violent towards her because of it, and like has a real like violent sexual outburst at her, but they kind of cut away from it, and we don't really know what happens after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't. So, uh, I just, I don't know how to take it other than I like the idea that she's calling him out on the fact that he has to literally pay everyone around him all the time for anything that he wants. And that, that doesn't make him a bigger man. That really basically makes him a much less of a man. Yeah, exactly. Later on, uh, they're playing a dice game. That's kind of like the dice have, um, like, uh, cards on them and you try to make your best poker hand with it. And Laura goes in there and schools both the guys who are playing and gets just a shit ton of cash pissing off, you know, the fucking, the big boss man guy who's kind of an asshole. Um, so, uh, then the aristocrat guy who was there, he's leaving the next day and she pops up from the back of the car. She had used the money to buy her freedom and she was like, I also have a friend on the inside, probably the henchman she boned. So, uh, so then, uh, he invites her to, you know, go to fucking Venice, uh, with him. Uh, so then, uh, Bill, her New York dude, he's getting told that his story, uh, because it's just political bullshit, it's getting bounced for her, you know, story, and, uh, he's like, yeah, I mean, that's fucking fine, that's fine, uh, and then he finds out that she's going to Venice as well. Well, she's in Venice, and she meets the Duke's wife, uh, this guy's a Duke, so he meets the Duke's wife, and she tries to sell... Emmanuel on fucking marriage, like a motherfucker. Uh, she's just like, hey, listen, it's, it's, it's fucking, it's the bee's knees, according to her. Uh, but, uh, I start to think she's trying to sell a little too hard, which always makes you wonder what the fuck's gonna happen. <laughs> she just wants a three way, that's all. Yeah. Well, that night, uh, Laura hears some arguing coming from those people's room. As she's listening at the door, a new dude comes running out. Well, we see the Duke's wife was getting railed and he walked in on it. Uh, she, you know, gets dressed, the Duke's wife, and leaves. Uh, and the Duke kind of hits on Manuel. She goes for it and he starts going down on her. And Manuel has her eyes closed, but as soon as she opens it, it's the wife actually going down. Uh, the Duke joins in. They all start, like, kind of going at it. But then all of a sudden, he's just concentrating on his wife. He and his wife just start fucking. And Laura leaves with a slight smile. And that ends that 20 minutes. All right, there's like a thing where they're sexually adventurous, this Duke and his wife, but at the same time, they really just want to be with each other. I think they're just kind of... Well, they're very... He's very traditional, I believe, and... uh... And uh, she she does things, I think, to just purposely get under his skin a little bit. Yeah, she likes things a little bit more on the wild side than I think what he does. And so they had this like game of bait and switch or something that they were supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely like he just wants his wife and his wife just really wants to experience every bit of physical pleasure she possibly can in any way, shape or form. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. And I don't I don't know how else to describe it other than that. And there's not a lot of plot line going on here it's just laura jemsner's character of emmanuel going to all these different people's lives entering in and finding their dark sexual proclivity habit and then also some weird illegal and or shady shit that they do to fund it that's our plot line and this is just so happens to be the duke and the bride we're on now between the 20 minute breaks yeah yep so uh well the next day she picks up bill but 
in, instead of spending a few days with her, he's only going to be in town for two hours before he has to go to London for for work. Well, they go around town and he fucks her in a symphony. So th- there you go. Uh, that night, the Duke's having a party and they're, you know, meeting a lot of people. And Laura sees this guy who, well, this one really weird dude kept, keeps coming up to her and she keeps shooing him away. But then she sees another really nice looking dude. And this older lady said, no, that's... That's her dude that she paid for it. And talks even about this island where you can go to get these dudes. Uh, it, it, it's fucking weird. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it's can... a reverse of what we've already seen from the other rich guy. It just so happens yeah. that there is a woman that moderates an island like this for the rich women to basically get sex slaves is what they're talking about. Yeah. So, um... Laura, uh, or I'm uh, sorry, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, she decides to dip out. So she checks out some of the Duke's paintings in his room, and that is our next clip. I don't like people who are too inquisitive. I just happened to come in here. I discovered your secret, how you fixed Van Duren. I have my infirmers. The camera was concealed in this bracelet, wasn't it? What are, what are you afraid of? I'm not here for work, and those forgeries don't interest me professionally. But if you put one over on Van Deren, I'll find that amusing. Why should I even trust you? Do you have any choice? You can kill me if you like. Don't be so cynical. Half of New York knows I'm here. Do you think it's worth it? Anyway, half of these are genuine. I like to collect paintings. All by yourself? Mm Mm-hmm. How do you manage to get them through customs? Well, a noble title has its advantages. Well, whatever. It's a great collection. They're perfect. Seriously. Something like your marriage. We disappointed you, huh? No, on the contrary, I'm grateful. Otherwise, I would have had doubts about my aversion for marriage. I might even have changed my mind. Come on, the party is not over yet. Mm, and damn, she knows how to call some motherfuckers out. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's very frank and just basically says some shit and really seems to get off on ripping people down in some way, shape, or form. Well, I think she gets down on ripping people down who think they're better than everyone else. Right, and I'm I'm okay with that. And there's a lot of discussion to have that uh, is very rife with what she's doing here. But it seems like she has a personal vendetta against people in power who use that power to basically basically traffic in other human flesh. And yeah. I got no issue with her calling these people out, but at the same time, how is she constantly surviving this and getting narrow escapes when it's supposed to be fun and wacky? You know, like, yeah, right. like there's some very serious, very dark subject matter that's just kind of dealt with very lackadaisical and whimsically that just doesn't sit right with me because they're doing it as an adult film. It's an adult-oriented film. There's adult yeah. situations, there's actual like hardcore penetration in scenes and shit like that, and yet we are still dealing with serious subject matter but in a very tongue-in-cheek and goofy way and then you mix that with the sex and everything and it just becomes this really weird very surreal hard to watch um hodgepodge of a film that you can't take a beat on maybe it's the only way the directors felt they could get the crowd who would come in to see these movies to hear these type of messages. Well, this is just Joe D'Amato's thing, man. He just, yeah. he deals in very dark, very dour, very grim subject matter in a very tongue-in-cheek and fun way. And it, it it's it's not for everybody is what I'm getting at here. Um, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the film. I'm not saying that I didn't like what I saw in the film. Um, I loved all the subject matter that they were touching on. I love the way they go about a lot of the stuff where she's doing the investigative journalistic stuff. It just just feels like the pornographic elements that are thrown into it almost take away from it. And that's very Joe D'Amato as well. Oh, wow. Um, all right. And uh, so they go back to the party and a big cake comes out. They said they're, the party's going to get even more interesting now. Everyone gets to eat some cake and then you got to find the, the whoever finds the golden peanut. They win. Well, we don't know what they win, but they're going to win something. It's going to be nice. 
So they, everyone's eating her, and then this old guy, he finds a fucking golden peanut, and everyone's like, hey, congratulations, senator. So it's a fucking senator. So, I mean, they, they get some high-powered people, and he goes, you get, you win the cake, the whole cake, and it's yours. And the guy's like, oh, well, all right, and that's cool. And then the cake opens up, and a woman, all slathered in cake, uh, fucking comes out. And, okie dokie, I guess, there you go, it's... You're having a good time now. Um, yeah, so his party is basically getting... It tr- turns into an orgy. Yeah. It, it devolves into an orgy. Right, and the whole trigger of this was finding the special golden peanut so that you can get a woman covered in cake for this cake. sex like fest that they're about to do. And and the sex fest starts, and this is where this movie gets a little hardcore. Yeah, uh, it goes from this, softcore this, uh, to full-fledged hardcore so porn, yeah. Yeah, this... Uh, this uh, we get uh, some actual oral in this where you see it actually happening. And you're like, okay, I, I guess this is happening. I looked away um, for a moment to try and find some information on this film because I'm trying to take a bead on how it's just all over the place. Yeah. Um, thematically speaking, you know how it's like kind of jumping around and what it's trying yeah. to do with the feel of the film. And then I look up and then all of a sudden it's like hardcore blowjob scene happening right in front yeah. of me. And I'm like, oh, oh, it's that kind of film. And uh-huh. I was I was just kind of like even more perplexed. So I kind of backed it up. And I'm like, was there any warning that it was going to get to this? Because I'd seen this cake scene and they were kind of all going off yeah. and then all of a sudden, boom. And then from here, the film decides it wants to do more hardcore penetrative scenes. So it sprinkles them in throughout. And I'm like, just kind of perplexed is again is this a softcore film is this a hardcore film is this just a hodgepodge of different versions of the same film done as softcore and hardcore <laughs> you know and i will say yes uh- <laughs> <laughs> right it's it's really hard to tell it's hard to take a beat on it but once once that part of it happens we're definitely in a hardcore film and uh and we just move on yep. that's that's how uh, we have to take so it. the the weird guy creepy guy he gets up to laura and you know takes her top down and starts going down on her but she has her necklace on and we see that's uh that's where that camera was hidden right in the right in the next list you saucy little minx you figured out how to get him again she's taking pictures of everything of course so uh you know nothing's ever private folks always always remember that yeah um, so it's again she's doing this reporting of the lifestyles of the rich and shameless and she's exposing these folks that are peddling in flesh and we have no idea what's going on in this party other than this is supposed to be high society and their sex lives and if these are all willing participants who are being paid that are not a member of the high society then more power to them you know like if the prostitution is legal where they're at then cool let them do what they're gonna do but it starts getting really weird and really twisted the further into this world that she gets and I think we're just kind of per perusing around the outside of like just how twisted human sexuality can be. And and I, yeah. I really think that's the crux of the film is they wanted to show you just how dark and, you know, strange sexuality in humans can be. And but they wanted to do it with such a light tone because they still wanted it to be like a fun sex film. And I think that's kind of where our our uneven tone comes from. I would completely agree. <laughs> because it's at this yeah. point that we know for sure that that's the journey that we're on. We're, we're going, she's going deeper and deeper into quote unquote depraved sexual acts and uh, in this high society and um, exposing these people that are doing some flesh peddling or whatever. And now that she knows that, you know, there are some people that actually have sex slaves that are part of this, you know, she just keeps going even deeper. Like any, any hint of any kind of impropriety in a sexual manner is something that she's going to go ahead and investigate and yeah she's not again i don't feel like emmanuel in this is doing it for exposing these people and fighting the power or whatever it's just more or less like look how fucked up rich people are, you know yeah i kind of get that feeling too um the only way i don't feel it is towards the end but we'll get into that later right but as of right now that's where we're at is what she's doing yeah yes so i mean numerous sexual acts are being seen here but really the only hardcore part is a woman uh, uh giving oral sex to a dude and that's the only thing hardcore everything else is kind of you can tell is simulated just also, or at least it's hidden right simulated right uh and also just wanted to point out too that the penis in that blowjob scene made me feel better about myself and um same I'm grateful t- that we have an average to somewhat below average man in a pornographic film. Uh, yeah. That really helped a lot of us dudes that have inadequacy issues in our brain. You mean like all men? Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Yeah. Um. So anyway, uh, well, she's back home and uh, we, we cut to she, uh, she leaves Venice. Uh, tells a guy who she's who you know drives her on a boat that he was the purest part of the trip for, and uh, she gets back home 
And she's taking photos of that same model. And apparently, uh, the dude asked her to, uh, they got married. And now he bones her, uh, like crazy all the time. So, you know, hey, I guess good for her that, you know, you did have a psychopath, uh, incel who wanted to murder a woman, but now you don't. So there you go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Again, they're playing it uh, to be super funny, but now he's like this ultra horny guy that will never leave her alone because all, yeah. the, all, the the hurdle they needed to clear was the marriage, and then he could have sex with her. So they're trying to make fun of and poke fun at the fact that he is this like really stringent religious fanatic that made him a in his mind voluntary celibate, but you know he wasn't able to really even accept the woman that he was supposed to be in love with because she had done nude modeling, and that made her evil and vile and all that shit unclean right and he's just he's totally a fucking incel and when you look at the way that this person is behaving all of the red flags are going off right here and you know that fucker's going to be bombing an abortion clinic or doing some kind of violent horrible shit later on in his life no matter what not anymore because now you know he's cured because all an incel needs apparently is you know instead of like years of therapy is apparently just uh lord jumser to you know possibly you know suck him off (laughs) to sexually assault him in a way to save her own life from him trying to murder her yes yeah. all of that again it's this it's the the way they handle the subject matter that is strange like they really need to be having a serious discussion about what's going on with this guy and how he has issues and whatnot but instead we're just going to make it a joke to where he got so horny because laura jemsner came on to him that he married the girl started having sex with her and now he's less stressed because all he yeah. wants is sex with his wife <laughs> apparently okay whatever thanks. movie let's move on yeah thanks thanks movie you're uh you did you did god's work apparently there Later on, Laura's at home and uh, she gets a call from uh, her, her her main her main dude, um, uh, Bill, and he's he's not gonna be home for a while, so uh, they they have some phone sex, and uh, that ends that twenty minutes of the movie. Surprised the phone sex wasn't a clip. I thought about it. I, I really, really, really did, but just decided not to. Because <laughs> even like, even their was, phone sex told the story of what was going on, because while they're yeah. getting off, they're updating each other on their lives, and it's a really interesting and weird sort of sequence. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting world they, they're all want to be a part of but see who, yeah it's that who am i to judge <laughs> right but it's that stuff that i'm like yeah see this stuff i'm okay with and this stuff feels like when you're when you're doing the joking around the way that they're doing it and they're trying to make things more lighthearted, that works but like don't try and play off the more dark aspects of the movie that you're trying to show me as also okay yeah. and fun because that's not yeah, working for me don't play off incels as uh, jokingly and fun because they're neither one of those. <laughs> <laughs> also, a guy who has an entire harem on an island that he has to pay to keep there and is yeah. dealing in arms just so he can do this for the women. And then there's a duke who basically hires hookers and has orgies to keep his wife interested because it's the only way that she can get off and all he wants is her. But yeah. at the same time, he seems like he kind of likes the stuff. He just is pretending to be stuffed shirt to have more fun with it. I, I just, I don't know. I can't take my pulse on it uh, with that yeah. at all. And I'm just not sure how I'm supposed to absorb all of this. And neither does Laura Jemsner's character for being a reporter in this or an investigative reporter. Emmanuel really doesn't spend a lot of time explaining what it is in the world that we're seeing. We are just shown it and we're supposed to process it, and then she maybe, apparently wrote an article on it. Maybe because as a reporter, she's not supposed to tell us how we're supposed to feel. She's just supposed to give us the info, and we have to decide how we're supposed to feel. Right, but we also don't know what it is that she's investigating, and we're just supposed to like draw our own conclusions by crates of guns in places, or a guy who deals in stolen art and is you know is also like not necessarily stolen, but is also dealing in counterfeit art as well. And so that's like the shady shit that he does to fund his sexual proclivities, you know, and. Like, well, that and being a duke, he probably has family money. Right. Well, and they're, she's exposing these folks, but we don't see the repercussions of it. We don't know what's going on. And like... Okay, well, that's true. Yeah. And like... You, you don't get any payoff on this. Yeah. You just follow her life. You no, know, this is just look at what rich people can afford to do that you can't, you fucking pleb. That's literally yeah. every sequence of this film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and that's partially why it's frustrating to me. But then again, they're trying to play it off as like this fun, exciting world, you know, like, like, hey, everybody, let's just have fun. Wouldn't it be great to be rich like this? You know? Yeah. And just get to do whatever we wanted. 
Right. And it doesn't, I don't know, it's not working for me. This is not the sort of thing with which um, I'm going to find enjoyment out of. Although, again, I did enjoy the film. It just probably pushed me in a different direction with it than what it thought. Like, it just kind of solidified like a class warfare mind frame for me. Yeah. And like, all, no, I get that. Literally, all I could think about the whole, t- the whole time I'm watching this is the stuff with Epstein and like all of these other rich and powerful folks that are sex traffickers and doing all of this horrible shit. You know, even like some of our own congressmen right now that have gotten away with this stuff and continue to somewhat get away with it, even though they're being investigated for this kind of shady shit, because all they have to do is throw money at the problem and it goes away. And it's kind of enraging to have it played off as something that is just fun and lighthearted and let's just have a good time. Yeah. No, totally understand. (laughs) And it's Um, not the filmmaker's fault because the filmmakers made this film when people actually did think that all of that stuff was okay because they were rich. Like, in the time that this film was made, people probably thought this was a fun, lighthearted film. Yeah. Actually, you're not wrong. They probably thought, hey, this is, what's wrong with this film? You know, why are you guys getting so uptight about everything? (laughs) Yeah, what the fuck is your problem, Court? Just let me post whatever the fuck I want. Yeah, Jesus, man. Just let these people just be fucking weird already. Um, let's see here. All right. So, uh, well, now, uh, we pick up here and she's driving out to that club where, um, the, uh, the, uh, the lady got the juggalo. So, uh, here we go. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is going to be some fucked up shit again. Uh, as she's driving out there, the driver dude is like, I don't know why you're doing this. Uh, you're way too hot for this. Uh, you know, some of the other, the other women who come here, yeah, they're uggos. So of course they have to do this. Uh, and, uh, you know, they have to pay the money. And she's just like, hey, I just want to do this. Well, she meets the manager, and that's our next clip. I'm Diana Smith. Welcome to the villa. Laura Rogers. How do you do? Oh, Miss Rogers. Your room is waiting for you. Later this afternoon, you'll be able to choose your partner. Would you like something to drink? Go ahead. I don't drink myself. I'd prefer one of these cookies. (laughs) May I? Oh, no, not one of those. They're made with some rather special ingredients and can have quite an effect on you. I'd wait until the... Until the right moment. (laughs) Yes, and now I'll show you to your room. You know how our payment schedule works here. Half in advance upon arrival and the rest at checkout time. Everything is covered in the bill, including any accessories you might require during your stay here with us. Accessories? Yes, of course, Miss Rogers. A lot of our clients like soft music, costumes, instruments of every type. I'm sure you know what I mean. Of course. And special cookies, too. Here's my down payment, Diana. The price is a bit steep. Absolutely justified, considering our high-class clientele. We offer total discretion and maximum security, and these things are cheap, naturally. All our personnel are of the highest quality. I'm sure you'll be completely satisfied. Here you can have whatever your heart desires. Most of our customers return every year. Okay, so yeah, it's literally the opposite of the other island, only this woman basically caters to single rich women or divorced rich women or widowed rich women in some of the cases that uh, put in their time to get the money from previous husbands. Well, she just or she just takes money from rich women. How about that? <laughs> right, uh, but there's for, for some, some of the, the stories. Of yeah, some of the stories of the women. Whenever we get to know some of them a little bit in the dialogue, they, in one way, shape, or form, or another, came into the money and or didn't earn them. The uh, didn't earn it themselves. The movie does it that way, where they're not born into the money. They either married into it or um, some, maybe one or two of them were born into it. But like, there was a very kind of misogynistic thread with this island going through that really kind of irked to me <laughs> well uh whatever it is these women are taking power back apparently and um so then we have a lineup and the the parade of dudes who come around and women are looking and you know feeling them up and seeing which ones they they want you know uh and as uh many wells taking pictures of this uh, as you know she does um then uh, she kind of goes around, and uh, one woman has uh, Tarzan sex with a dude in a tent. This is full-on hardcore everything there. Did you happen to recognize the dude who was being her Tarzan? Uh, I did not. Uh, that is um, George Eastman, the very tall cannibalistic killer who eats his own guts and rips the baby out of the lady in another J- Joe D'Amato oh. film that we watched. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Which I believe is known as Anthropagus, how it's pronounced. Yeah. We had to We had to play the clip to know for sure, but... Anyway, and and also George Eastman is in a ton of other Italian films, but uh, you get to see everything of George Eastman in this shot and or in this scene, and uh, you even get to see a very weak sauce um, money shot. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was everything was kind of weak sauce with these sex scenes, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's very, um, it's real sex. I mean, it's not. Yeah, let's let's be honest about it. This is an engineered stuff to where they have like the fake squirting, you know, ropes of jism that make it look all nice and impressive when that's not really what's happening in the film. This is yeah. this is actual sex. This is actual, you know, uh, dudes pulling out and you know doing their thing where they're gonna go. But the thing that really weirded me out by this was the fact that I just watched George. <laughs> Eastman, who I'd seen in a ton of movies as a you know straight up actor, uh, having you know all of this sexual intercourse going on on screen, and then only recognizing him because I saw his own face after he <laughs> did the wink sauce shot. So it's a so it's a vinegar uh, stroke look, yeah. <laughs> vinegar stroke look, yeah. There you go. And I felt really weird that I recognized him from that, <laughs> and I just didn't know how to deal with it. And I think that's pretty much what set my mood off on this film, like where I just didn't know how to take the tone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, their sex scene was just her playing out of fantasy and him like saying that he's going to devour her flesh, which just meant that he was going down on her. And then he yeah. pretty much forces her down to go down on him, and yeah. then they do it raw doggy style. And then yeah. all of a sudden it's money shot cut all like, you know, with him putting a little bit of a load blow on her face and then her continuing to perform oral on him. It just seems to me like they cut together a bunch of different sex scenes they shot that day and just kind of this is what we ended up with. Instead of them putting it together like an actual porn, they tried to cut it in as like a sex scene in the movie, but with actual penetrative sex. So it's still actual porn. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, well, then she takes pics of a dude getting flowers painted on his body, and then the lady puts flower, actual flowers in his in his pubes, and she goes, "Now there are flowers in your bush." Sorry, dude, you you you, <laughs> I don't know what kind of fun you're having here, but uh, at least you're getting paid for it. Um, yeah, this is probably not the sexual conquest he thought he was going to be getting paid to do, and we're still not sure. Are, are we even sure that these gentlemen are even willing, or have they been like sort of trained and brainwashed on this island? Like, we don't even know what's going on. Like, where's the shady shit happening here? Yeah. That, I mean, that's true. I think they're getting paid for it. But um, most of them yeah. seem like willing participants and or are really all about doing the stuff that they're doing on this island. But like some of the dudes don't seem like they want to be there or are even all together. They're like the dude being painted. He's just he just seems drugged out of his mind. Like maybe they're forcing cookies in the guys so that. I, I, but I don't know, you know, what yeah, the cookies could be part of it. Yeah. But I also don't know what what he's supposed to do when you're having flowers painted all over you. I think you just kind of stand there and go. All right, lady. Uh, whatever you whatever you need, I guess. Right. Well, it's the film itself doesn't really tell us what it is that we're seeing here or how we're supposed to take this, other than hey, uh, ladies like sex too, and sometimes we'll pay for it. Yeah. That, well, then that's literally it. Yeah. And then she spies on a lady who gets double teamed and uh, by two dudes, and this goes right back to hardcore stuff. So there you go. Um, yeah, she's playing skin flute on two dudes that are essentially um, almost uh, dry docking each other. So <laughs> they close. are almost docking. That is true. The <laughs> kids call it docking. Uh, and then like for a little while, one dude is soaking while she's yeah. performing oral on the other guy. And then she, there, she's it's it, it's a spit roast, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. She is really into being spit roasted, apparently, which, yeah. hey, if that's your fantasy, if that's what you're into. Awesome. You know, hey, man, yeah, I'm not here to argue anybody's stuff, man. You you do guys. You guys do what you do as long as you're not hurting anybody and then everyone consents. Fuck it. What do I care? Right. But what I'm getting at still here is in this sequence with this particular island and all the ladies. Ladies paying for sex from the gentleman, we don't really see just yet. Where is the sleazy thing that is funding this? Where is the wrong thing that they're doing? And that's why I'm just assuming that some of those guys are not there willingly, and these are flesh peddled sex slaves. That could be. Well, anyway, then she finds a lady and a guy playing a Zorro fetish, and nothing really happens there, though. Uh, he then whips she's... her, and she masturbates while he is doing it, and that gets her off. There is something yeah, very much really happening there. You don't get to see it, though, so... It's heavily implied, and you do yes. get to watch her do what she needs to do, but it's heavily implied that he's whipping her, and you don't actually see it, you just hear it you with hear sound it. effects, and she yeah. moans even louder each time the whip cracks. So, that's how I took it, that that's what they were trying yeah, to do. Probably. Which I don't get, because Zorro didn't with people he I, they're uh, actually you know Zor whatever Zorro, man I'm not, I'm not I'm, okay I'm fine <laughs> uh, Zoro did have a whip and Zoro also had a sword and there were different um people who would be Zoro that were heroes and sometimes he would have a whip and sometimes he would have a sword depending upon who it was that was fighting the evil as Zoro at that point all right yeah okay so anyway I uh, 
So uh, then she sees a woman who's getting it on with the dude, and the dude's going on, it, like, doing stuff to her, but she's watching a snuff film. It's some pretty horrific shit, too. Uh, yeah, they took a page directly out of Cannibal Holocaust with this and used really yeah. grainy, very blown-out footage and uh, shot it in such a way as to make it feel very realistic. Um, yeah. I did watch this stuff on, I watched this movie on my projector and I can tell you from the sequences that what you think you were seeing that was so horrific and awful was really heavily implied and done in such a way as to make you believe that you're seeing something so much more horrific than what you are. Very much like Cannibal Holocaust, where yeah. they show you just enough to make you believe. And some of the things that were happening in there, some of the violation pieces that were happening there is actual penetrative sex that was happening. but the torment the blood and the other things of the people the pain on the faces of the actresses that is where i am 100 percent convinced it was false because there's a couple of shots in there where i can kind of see you know that they fucked up or, or something that made me realize it was not real let's just yeah, let's just put it, it that way uh, i do want to say that these sequences with the snuff stuff and i'm not going to dwell on it anymore this uh in this film is what inspired david cronenberg to do what he did with um videodrome and some of the torture sequences and the things that happened in videodrome like that is what inspired him i've uh, never seen videodrome oh well <laughs> yeah that is a uh, um yeah it, it's a very serious uh cronenberg flick that is we'll have to do it someday but i don't know if necessarily if you were ready for it yet but the infamous snuff footage that we were talking about the the very serious nasty snuff footage that's in this film um while it is 100 percent fake um he also was influenced by it and made the movie because of that so um and i was uh correct in my assumption the alternate versions of emmanuel in america i just looked it up because I wanted to make sure I got that trivia stuff right. Um, the version that we watched, the reason that it's so all over the place and kind of hard to, to get a beat on is that this is the completely restored version with all of the footage that was shot for it um, put back into the film and put into a length. So... You know, I thought this was pretty a longer film for an Emmanuel movie. Yeah, it's supposed to be about 93 minutes, which is about an hour and a half to, you know, 93 minutes. And what we got is like an hour and 39 minutes. So we got like an additional six yeah. extra scenes. So I'm guessing that there's some softcore versions of stuff that would be cut out for a hardcore version of this film when it were to mm -hmm. be released. And then there's softcore footage that would be inserted where the hardcore footage was supposed to be cut out. And what we got as the lucky individuals that we are is literally everything they shot, where it was supposed to go in the film. And that is why the tone is jumping all around. Because in a softcore version, with the more severe subject matter that they're talking about, if you take out some of the uh, goofier aspects that end up in the hardcore versions of the film, I think it would have a different tone. And that's why it jumps all over the place for us. And uh, yeah, now that I know that, I'm going to back off the film's uh, uneven tone because that's why it's just this assembly cut of literally everything so you get the film completely as it was shot you're gonna get off its metaphorical nuts on this <laughs> yeah because the reason it's so uneven in tone is because it's all of the footage cut together it's not the different alternate versions it's just like it's an assembly version essentially is what we watched and that makes sense yeah. now all right nice um so anyway um so then she goes back to her room and here's men coming so she takes uh the film out of her necklace thing and she's like uh oh, well i gotta do something with it uh we don't see it i think it's heavily implied she she uses the old uh the old prison wallet well yeah because they have her naked yeah. later on and yeah, they well, still she, don't find it yeah and she hides in a uh she 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 hides uh away in uh in a in a fucking uh she locks in herself in a storage closet in her closet. room and before yeah. they can get to her she hides the roll of film and lets them find the camera yeah so uh they don't even find the camera they find the bracelet empty and so they take her to the boss lady and that's our next clip a simple deduction i assure you one of my stallions reads your magazine all the time an occupational hazard may i have my clothes back i'd like to get dressed i'll hang on to them as a precaution if you should go out like that, you won't get very far. I'll give you back everything once you've handed over the roll of film. You were seen snooping around taking photographs. I want you to know that we don't like your kind here. We can wait. Meanwhile, we'll lock you in your room. I really don't think you'll find it's worth it. You must understand that we have to protect all the clients we have in the world. Suppose the role is nowhere to be found. Will you have me killed? 
Oh, no, we'll get it eventually. And, Miss Rogers, you can't do anything without proof. We have our reputation to think of. Our organization is an extremely successful one. We have important people who take care of us, guarantee us protection. I'd hate to think something might happen to you. Like being arrested for something you were not involved in. For instance, drug running. We have friends in this country, and New York's a long way off. I'd think it over. May I have a drink? Would you like one, too? I've never smoked, and I don't drink alcohol. And men? I didn't ask you in here to discuss my private life. The only thing I want from you is that roll of film. <laughs> What's the hurry? Why can't we be friends? You might change my mind. You don't like men. But love, just think. Two female hands touching your skin. Searching you. Knowing the right places. Here, taste this. Go on, try it. Everything will seem more beautiful, more exciting, more erotic. Stop it. What do you think I am? You make me feel sick, you filthy whore. I'm not going to listen to you. I can't believe you're a virgin. You wouldn't be bad in bed. Let's try. Stop it. Stop it. Wow, things got really weird there real fast, but it's an interesting way that she escapes, you know? And 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 but uh, she gets real rapey there and her life's not in any danger there. It even was specifically said, you're not in any danger of anything there. So she just needs to escape with the film, so she does this yeah. as a way to escape. She drugs the woman and essentially does a very forceful seduction that is essentially rape. Yeah. Uh, so that's, yeah, it's, uh, kind of weird. Um, yeah, it's modern take on it. You're not going to really be able to find a way to really talk around it other than she did this specifically to strip the woman of her clothes so that she could escape with her clothes. Yes. That's literally the only reason that she did it. It's a plot point for her to do that with, and, uh, hopefully it would be handled more deftly nowadays. Yeah. 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 So that's uh exactly kind of what happens is that she uh she gets a hold of all the clothes there and um uh so then she runs out and um she uh the guy who was drove her there she hops in the car and they drive away and she says listen if you help me get away i can help you and she pretty much bones him to you know get away but this is really so. weird because she causes a car crash Wreck. to get yeah. sex with him well, they're still trying to get away. Yeah. And we have no idea why she picked this guy and this guy doesn't even know why she picked him, right? Like, because he just shows up all of a sudden and she uses him to escape? Yeah. Because he was just like a taxi driver or something for somebody else that was coming to greet the island. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And yeah. it's just more or less she had to cut uh, short her sexual proclivity with the lady that she was trying to escape. So then she just uses this guy to get off. Is that what the movie's trying to tell us? That or she thinks she has to fuck this guy to get away. I so, so the hill driver and take her to get close. Right. Again, in a softcore film, you would have more questions about this. But in a hardcore film, the logic just literally means whatever gets these people's clothes off so we can watch more people have sex. Yeah, and, pretty much. And so that the film keeps jumping back and forth in that logic. And the reason is because we're watching an assembled cut, which is literally everything thrown together. Yeah. And that we just just that's the film that we're presenting. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, uh, I- exactly. So anyway, um, God damn it. I got lost. OK, so she's back in New York uh, and there's a lot of shit happening. Uh, we hear on the radio like there's. In St. Jonasburg, there's a lot of uh, uh, race violence happening. And then she reads uh, that she sees a picture of a girl who said that she was murdered in a revenge killing. But she knows that girl is one of the girls she saw in the snuff film. So it can't be that. You know, she's like, it's not that at all. The editor says, points her to an ex-cop who may have some answers for her. Uh, he, she meets the ex-cop and he tells her that there are powerful folks that know all about this. It's really bad. But he gives her a name of a politician in Washington who he knows has direct kind of contact with this. That's the end of the 20 minutes, and we're getting ready to go into the final 20 minutes. Okay, so this is where the film takes a really dark turn because she saw the snuff film stuff. She wanted to sneak the footage out of that that she got the photos of, and now she wants to investigate this side of it. And here is where, in even a softcore film, you would have a little 
little bit more of a serious tone and you would take a very much more somber idea because she has totally just stumbled into a world that is deeper and darker than she ever imagined, sexually speaking. And even this character, Emmanuel, is shocked and horrified at what it is that she saw. But then they play it off that she's also kind of interested in it because she just wants to learn more with what we're about to see with the stuff with the senator. Yeah. So, She's not as horrified at about it as she is interested in it. Right. And then that really takes a weird twist and a turn. And let's just let's just go. I mean, because it just uh, yeah. what else can we explain about it or talk about it than that? Exactly. Um, so anyway, um, she follows th- this senator around, watches him with his family, all that. And the next day she accidentally not really, purposely, spills food on him to get introduced to him. They actually end up spending the day together, and that's our next clip. I think I'd make a habit of spilling food over people if I knew I'd meet someone like you every time. Just how do you mean that, young lady? (laughs) You're attractive, intelligent, full of charm, and with a strong sense of responsibility. Is that what you really think? I think you believe in the United States. Everybody in this country is so concerned about what the world thinks of us. When actually we should feel great pride in what we've achieved. But this is the greatest country in the world. Are there many people who share your views? Yes, but what about the young people of today? Their heads are stuffed full of crazy ideas and a lot of nonsense. What we really need right now is another war. Then they'd come back with their heads screwed on straight. Those who do come back. And the ones who don't come back will have given some meaning to their lives, sacrificing themselves for their country. It's beautiful to hear you talk about America like that. You must love it very much. Yes, it's a fantastic country. But I must be boring you. It's just that I enjoy talking to you. Am I boring you? Oh, no, not at all. It's not every day I have the pleasure of meeting someone like you. But now I have to say goodbye to you. Why? You have a plane to catch? (laughs) No, I'm on vacation. But you're an important man. You must have a lot of commitments. An important man decides for himself how to fill his day. (laughs) Besides, you couldn't possibly leave me now. Why not? You have to come with me to change the coat you ruined for me. Oh, are you inviting me to your house? I promise I won't eat you up. All right, well, they then go to bed to one another, and she's, like, trying to push him to do, like, you know, she, hey, I want to get real weird and push our limits. So he closes all the shades, and she's taking pics of him while he's doing it. And then he puts on a porn. She doesn't really react, and she says she wants something even more sensational. So then he puts on a snuff film, and they watch, and this is even more horrible, horrible images of things being done to people, which is pretty horrific. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, one lady gets, like, clips in her mouth, and she's raped until it cuts her face, and she dies. I mean... Yeah, it's, it's not good. Uh, yeah, they put a riding crop in her mouth, and basically the one yeah. guy pulls back until he kills her, and the other dude is raping her as it's happening. This yeah. is the stuff where it's very clearly much more staged and a little bit more yeah, obvious because yeah. the makeup, like with the, the mutilations and things that are happening. But yeah. The way that they film it is to make it feel more extreme and intense, and it very much does. It's uh, it's very grotesque footage. Um, yes. It's very, very hard to watch a lot of it this stuff. It is horrific to watch. Even though you know it's fake. But then, at the same time, Laura Jemsner's character of Emmanuel is kind of intrigued by it and letting the dude do stuff to her sexually and seems like she's into watching it and having sex while it's happening because yeah, it's so they, horrific. Because they do have sex, and... She talks about how much she liked it, and uh, she's like, I wish, she even says that she wishes maybe a part of her can experience it. Maybe she has uh, 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 problems with that, but she's kind of into it. And all this while, he's pouring them some drinks, and he puts some powder in her drink. After she drinks, she kind of goes kind of tonic, uh, but, and we get in and out blinks, where she's laying in bed, and then they're on a plane. She's back in bed. Then she's walking into this facility. They open up a window and we see this fucking rape and murder all happening in person. And all the while, the politician's feeling her up and, you know, slipping off her underwear as she's watching it. Well, she wakes up in the bed and he, she said, was that all a dream? And he said, yeah, it was a dream. It was due to he gave her LSD to give her that sensation like she was there to experience it, even though she wasn't. And he drew her like a ridiculously large amount if that's lsd yeah. he gives her quite a bit yeah that looked like a that looked like a lot that looked like a way more than you probably should give somebody who's never done it yeah and uh, um clearly whatever this was was just a shortcut to get around this story and just kind of move things along and they're like no that was all just a dream yeah so um 
After all that, uh, she's back at the newspaper place, and that's our final clip. All I did was waste my time. I saw it all on a trip. Sorry, Freddie. Ah, you're talking about drugs. Are you sure about that? Yes. And when I woke up, it was as if I had had a bad nightmare. The first ever failure of my career. I should have listened to my friend, not my editor. Hey, huh? Look at these. You really think a nightmare can be photographed? I don't believe it. They're magnificent. So it did happen after all. Yeah, it's enough to make you puke. And I'm not surprised you remember it as a nightmare. You're lucky you woke up. It has to be a first. Yeah, I'm afraid it's that all right. It's a scoop of the century. So everything I did wasn't in vain then. I can feel I accomplished something. You'd be doing yourself a favor if you just carried on thinking it was a nightmare. Try and forget the whole thing. What do you mean by that? You're not trying to tell me you're scared of publishing. Nah, it's got absolutely nothing to do with me. It's just that for the first time since I've been in this paper, the owner came down here and specifically ordered me not to publish any article based on your photographs. And no two ways about it. But don't worry, I'll put it in the archives. And at the first opportunity that comes along, I'll publish it. All right? Hey, wait a minute. I don't give a damn about the archives. Don't you realize I could have been killed if we don't condemn these atrocities publicly? Other girls are going to get dragged into it, and we'll become accomplices to the whole filthy business. I'm sorry, Emmanuel, but listen, there's nothing I can do about it. I don't like it any more than you do. Oh, come on. You're sorry. Uh -huh. Then why don't you do something? Hey, Freddie, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to blow this whole place up. And that includes All you, it. the paper, the owner, the it. archives. Now I'd better go. Yeah, all right. You do that. You go off, have yourself a few days vacation. When you come back, we'll discuss the whole thing. What, a few days? I'm going to take a week off, then a month. Okay. Then a year, five years, we'll discuss ten it years. All my life if I feel like it. All right. Well, she bolts out of there, and she is with her main man, Bill, and they're kind of out in the jungle it seems, uh, on a vacation. And they're lamenting about how she quit and she's done with all this shit and fuck this place, it's bullshit, I'm out of here. And they and, decide they're going to just live in the jungle because the folks that are yeah. here are much healthier and happier and, you know, how much more yeah. beautiful will they be and blah, blah, blah. And then she gets caught up in a trap and he laughs and a bunch of the uh, villagers come take her. And then she's getting cleaned up in a tent and Bill comes over and he's a little drunk. He goes, I may have sold you, but I'm not sure. And whatever. And then... um because, yeah, this none of this makes any sense, really. But anyway, so then they do this tribal celebration where she, apparently she's married to the chief, but the chief's other wives need his attention. So he goes, you celebrate. This is your celebration. They have fun. Um, the next morning, they wake up from the party, Bill and her, and they realize uh, there's some noise. And they're actually shooting a movie in this village. So they say, well, we got to get the fuck out of here. They run away. Roll credits. <laughs> So we don't really get an idea of why all of a the sudden they're in the tribal stuff and why it ends up this way. I feel like they just didn't know how to end the movie and they wanted to try and give it a happy ending and an upbeat ending. But we were yeah, just and I, we were just it's almost like they had to put more upbeat stuff in it. Like they couldn't just have those two in the like happily on a vacation going, well, at least we're happy dun, dun, after you saw all this dark shit. So then they're like, well, let's put a party in there, too, because we need to really lighten up the mood after showing all this dark, dark shit. That's not going to be resolved. Everyone's going to get away with everything and, you know, all that shit. Which so. is unfortunately very true to how life is. The way the guy actually yeah. said, there's nothing I can do about it and I don't like it any more than you do. But it seems like everybody's so disaffected and they don't really care and they're not upset at all. Yeah. And I think that's just the filmmakers trying to rush everything. And then at the very, very end, we have all these like the tribal folks that are supposed to be like out in the middle of nowhere being paid to be filmed. And they're only agreeing to certain things and they're getting paid in what looks like American cash by a film crew. Yeah. And then Emmanuel and her beau just decide to run and get out of the movie and just escape it so they're not caught up in being shot in a film. Yeah. So uh, the whole thing is like this weird, surrealistic, sort of like fever dream of a movie at this point because even it be goes into like this full like sort of meta moment here at the very, very end. So it makes it really hard on how are you supposed to actually take this? You know, are yeah. these variations on a theme? Are these uh, just various uh, erotic um, fantasy storylines that they just kind of wanted to meld together into an entire story? It's just, it's really hard to kind of gauge Emmanuel in America and how you want to view it and what 
what it is that you really want to see in it. Um, and I, I think it's because we have every version of the film just kind of slammed together into this portmanteau of a film that that yeah. tells you all these tales. And um, now that I know more about it, I'll probably have to watch it again and give it another chance. Um, because as everyone heard while I was in the middle of it, oh, no wonder, because it's a clip, you know, like it's a bunch of stuff that was clipped out and then just all got shoved back in. That's why it's like that. Um, yeah. The restoration, I do need to comment on that. Uh, the Mondo Macabre restoration of this is absolutely gorgeous. It looks incredible. The film grain is still there, obviously, but uh, the jumps in color and everything is only there when it's an aesthetic or artistic choice, like when they do the snuff footage or they show footage of like what should be a porn film that the characters are viewing. That yeah. stuff looks very different, but everything that is Emmanuel's tale, even all the stuff that is cut out and put back in or whatever it is where it's being jumped around, all that stuff looks great. All that stuff looks even and everything looks um, as it as it should. And it, it all sort of fits together. And it's surprisingly really like really well restored. You know, I wonder yeah, what I agree, the elements yeah. were, what the elements actually look like to get it to look this great, because I've seen other Joe D'Amato films that were on Blu-ray. Like when we did Porno Holocaust or not Porno mm -hmm. Holocaust, we did uh, Erotic Nights of the Living Dead is the one that we yeah. Yeah. And we saw a lot of George Eastman there, but not as much as we did in this film. And oh, those shots, there was some stuff in that where some of the footage, like, you know, because when you shoot on short ends like they tend to do with these types of adult films, you know, because it saves them money, the film doesn't match up as well. And they didn't color grade it or time it in that Blu-ray that we had nearly as well as what we've got with this Mondo Macabro Blu-ray. So I, I, the film itself, I don't know how to take it. I don't know whether or not I enjoy it. I, I definitely know I need to watch it again with the eye more towards, okay, Okay, so what what part of the story would work in the softcore version versus the hardcore version and what about this is bugging me in this particular fully assembled version that I'm having a hard time you know kind of taking a, a, an edge on and I just I feel like there are some shortened versions of Emmanuel in America that were released to DVD here and were also on video here in America and almost all of the um, snuff film footage stuff was cut out almost completely to where you don't even see any of it. They just talk about how that's what it is. Um, most of the violence is removed and it's just mostly like, you know, softcore nudity and boobs in those scenes. And I think if you saw that version of the film, you probably would have had a great time and it would have seemed like a lot like a fun little romp. And yeah, it really makes me kind of concerned about some of these other films that uh, came out of this era that were like these Euro um, sort of sleazy uh, you know, softcore sex films that I'd seen in the past. And if I ever catch an uncut version of that, will that change, you know, my warm and fuzzy feelings that I've had about those films? Um, it, yeah, it kind of makes me wonder like what the full intention of the filmmakers was at the time with some of those too, you know, like <laughs> it could just been, I wanted to shock people. Right. And that's definitely fitting with Joe D'Amato as well. Um, and he does, he works in like most Italian filmmakers. He works in like textures. He works in ideas. He works in sequences that sort of flow into each other. So this is very much an Italian film through and through, like as you would expect it to be, but it also is very hard to take a pulse on it and kind of find out where you're going. But that's pretty much every Italian film, especially in the horror genre. I mean, like you can't love Lucio Fulci and then also demand a solid through line of a movie because that's not how he works. He works in shapes. He works in color. He works in, you know, a very painting uh, cinematography where, where he just shows shows you imagery and moves the story along sort of that way and you either go on the ride of this weird surrealistic uh painting of a film that you're watching or you don't and that's the case with uh joe d'amato in this with emmanuel in america you can either go along with this weird trip of a of a film that just kind of flows from one scene to the next and doesn't really give you a through line for that but is gorgeous looks incredible has a ton of beautiful footage of a lot of beautiful naked bodies if that's the sort of thing that you're into you're gonna enjoy it for that as well but you know if you start digging into it for review stuff like what matt and i did where you're trying to find tone you're trying to find a way to talk about it and you're trying to uh recall the story and uh definitely discuss it it's extremely difficult to do that uh because yeah. it's it's definitely all over the place and i just i don't know what i feel about the film other than the parts of it that i did enjoy i very much did enjoy the parts of it that were harder to take or understand with the tone. Um, I need to shift my perspective on that a little bit because it's an assembly footage version of the film. And uh, perhaps I just need to view it as that and not want more than what I got. This is also true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely not the worst film that we've ever seen. And it's definitely not the no. most confusing and incoherent. But at least it's Laura Jimser. So that's 
again, it looks That's something. It looks incredible. Every single shot in this film is restored beautifully. And yeah. the, the nudity that's on display is part of that. And Laura Jemsner's body is also part of that. So mm-hmm. that alone would definitely garner a rewatch for just about everybody that's in the audience, I think, especially Matt. Uh, but. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're going into this trying to follow a story, as we tried to do with our review, you're going to probably have a hard time trying to make heads or tails of it. But that's not what this yes. film is for. This, no, this, film, this is not to be reviewed, actually. <laughs> no, it's a visual feast to be enjoyed in some way, shape yeah. or form. And that's that's literally all it is. And you're stepping back and looking at it and discussing it as if it is a cubist painting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is what we're kind of doing here. And it, I don't feel like we've done the film a disservice because we've dissected every part of it that we possibly could in the discussion. And my final thoughts on my end result of this is, yeah, the story is kind of hard to follow and confusing. The The tone of it is all over the place, but this is more of dealing with shapes <clears throat> and generalities and looking at an overall aesthetic choice in a softcore slash hardcore type of film. This story is going to be secondary anyway. And what they did give us, at least they experimented with with telling a darker story and trying to get, you know, very valid points across that are still very valid to this day about sex and how rich people can just afford to do the weirdest shit that they want to do. You know, like the class yeah. warfare themes that are in this are actually quite solid and still very good, but kind of subverted by the weird tone uh, in the edit. So, I mean, there's a lot to unpack and talk about and discuss, but it, again, you're just going to be confused. The more I try to talk about it, the more confused I am and not sure what my point is that I felt about the movie. <laughs> (laughs) right. (laughs) which is a really weird place to be and um, if you're going to look at it as like an artistic expression of a film like an erotic art film it definitely is that I will give you that if that's how you want to view the film that is definitely what it is yeah why not (laughs) <laughs> All right. Do you have anything else you want to talk about or should we just move on? No, to the... I think I got really everything out when I was there oh. so or in the movie. So, All right. Well, let's take a little break here. We're going to play a little more music I grabbed right out of the film. We're going to have a little piece of feedback that we got. Then when we come back, we will take care of that feedback. <laughs> Without the sound of wet mud and a boot yeah. that is soaked stepping into wet mud going on in the background, it's much easier to grab music out of a film. <laughs> with, with less wet mud. Yes, yeah. but we don't have time to talk about those various sound effects that were missing from the film. We only have enough. Time for incoming mail! All right, I'm going to let him introduce himself because I'm not 100% sure the email came in in a bunch of different ways, but this was shared through me via Dropbox. Huh? Hey, guys, I just wanted to say... Thank you, Corey and Matt, for Cinema Sire! That was a short version. Now allow me to do it long form, if you will. This is John Rhodes from Rhodes on the Rocks, the movie Misfits, and formerly of Graveshift Radio, the podcast with balls. Am, am I allowed to say that anymore? <clears throat> and the long-lasting Rabbit and Red Radio, plus some other shit podcast. Gentlemen, and I use that term incredibly loosely, I just wanted to leave a message congratulate. Six years in 300 episodes. <laughs> Six? <laughs> Wait, What? Six years? Six fucking years? You've got to be kidding me. They've done six fucking consecutive years of a podcast together? Like they haven't killed each other or at least developed a deep-seated hatred of one another and an inability to tolerate the other? Holy fucking shit. Now that (laughs) is a true accomplishment to be proud of. Trust me. But you guys should also be very proud of this show. It's fantastic, deeply entertaining, and I'm very glad to have been forced into listening. You remembered how Jason Gray said he was going to find 
the other listener. Well, Jason, you can finally get off my back with the, you should listen to Cinema PsyOps. You should listen to Cinema Cinema PsyOps. You should listen to Cinema PsyOps. You should listen to Cinema Cinema PsyOps. God damn. Are you happy now, Jason? Huh? I'm here. I'm a convert now. <laughs> anyway, Court, <laughs> Matt, you should be very proud of yourselves and the work you've done here. I just have to say thank you for the hours of entertainment you've provided me and many, many others. I'm just sorry it took me so long to start listening. You guys can cut it right here. Okay, now that we're alone, I'm curious about this cult, I, I, I mean, group think thing. I'm not much <laughs> of a follower, but I'm really interested in like a right-hand man position. Just let me know if there's any interest in that or really any managerial opening. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, Hope to hear from you soon <laughs> thank you very much john oh it's that's good stuff yeah grave shift radio i mean you just you heard the pedigree right and that's yeah. fucking amazing that uh well one you finally found the show thanks to jason gray hounding you constantly to give us a shot <laughs> that's pretty amazing <laughs> and uh I, i'm really really happy that you loved it as much as you did so much so that it sounded like he was impressionating my intro to say hello that's uh, yeah i i believe he was i'm uh, i'm extremely flattered that someone yeah. with that much history in the podcasting world would uh, would reach out in such a way. And thank you so much for that feedback, John. That is exactly what I needed to hear in this exact moment when I'm trying to force my way through doing a review, bummed out and depressed and sad and worried about the health of my cat. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. That was absolutely amazing. And what a mood booster. Also, the groupthink thing doesn't really have managerial openings. I mean, way to crush his fucking feelings already. (laughs) Oh, come on. With that voice, he's going to do just fine in this world. It's true. He'll be all right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So once again, thank you to everybody that helped us get the theme song off and running this year. And by us, I mean me. And thank you so much, John, for that mood boosting feedback. And uh, in the email, he had said that he was waiting to hear how uh, our review shook out for uh, Phantasm, like all all of the Phantasms before he Uh was going to send this this in. And now it makes more sense as to why, Uh, because I think him being a fan of the show or not may have been hinging on how we did those phantasm reviews which is really interesting and i'm glad that we knew about that after the pressure was off yeah yeah same yeah we, we and i feel like that really helped us do the review better you know no pressure i can't handle it <laughs> well in order to relieve you of even more pressure we are going to end this fucking show <laughs> If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com com itunes spotify stitcher youtube and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found Flying away.
All right, so that was a weird ending for a very weird film, but that's just what we got, and that's what we're going to keep going with with that. Uh, the music in Emmanuel in America is just as uh, strange and uh, hard to pull a beat on as the rest of the film. Yes, <laughs> seems it seems that way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, if you'd like to find past instances of the 313 previous episodes where we just could not figure out how to draw a beat on a film to do a review for it, so we just fumbled our way through it and talked like a bunch of jack asses that's available at legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops and that is quite literally just about every fucking review we have ever done yeah pretty much you can find us on instagram as cinema underscore psyops that is the main meme repository that is somewhat winding down as i am running out of new shit to give you three things every day so i'm not sure how much longer i'm going to be able to keep that going at the rate that it's been at but we'll see what we can do cinema underscore psyops on instagram of course the same things get reposted on our cinema Cinema PsyOps page, which you can like on Facebook. And then we also have our group there for the group thinking of Cinema PsyOps on Facebook. This is true. I am available there on Facebook as Court PsyOps. Matt exists in a certain state where he can be tagged in things as Matt PsyOps there on Facebook. And apparently everyone's a judgy motherfucker these days. You can email feedback to Matt, PsyOpMatt at gmail.com, but you're better off just sending it to me at CinemaPsyOpsCourt at gmail.com because at least I will try to respond to you and work in the feedback into the show in some way, shape, or form, depending upon whether or not I'm stuck on vacation. Yeah, well, yeah, it can be stuck in the middle of nowhere. Right, the reason that the reason that John's uh, feedback did not show up on the first episode of this year is because, well, uh, the first episode of Year 7 was recorded the Saturday before I left and finished editing the Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> like That was some hardcore work you had to throw into there, and that was pretty impressive. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of shit that I had to do in those two days, and that was all just to be able to drive to Colorado for a fucking seven-day vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Not counting the shit I had to do at actual work, but nobody cares about that. They would rather talk about how they can twit a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the porn bot filled haven that is Twitter. And also, when you are tweeting twats to folks, you can tweet photos of your twats if you choose. I'm at court underscore psyop there and he is at psyop matt and we are there all day to follow those tweeting twats yeah all day long <laughs> well i've got nothing else emmanuel in america has drained me uh, and confused me yeah it, 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 that has literally drained the living shit out of me man i i got nothing to the end of this because of how much that took out of me <laughs> well while all of the films that we are watching are draining your vital life fluids and or your willingness to live make sure to make it at least one more week that you can kick the fuck out of and make it your bitch hear me okay yep all right awesome go ahead record on your side and make sure it's actually recording all right check 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 yep one two three i'm showing waves so <laughs> does it uh look like um this microphone is set a blue, blue snowball and i'm seeing waves okay just kind Mike's of coming through just kind of wonder because we don't know what happened last week as to why it didn't yeah. export and all that so that's just why i was curious is all yeah i'm watching it um, so something's not right with Mac after we got him back. We can't tell if he's just depressed or what, but like he's not eating and it's just not been great right now. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Dude. Yeah. 
so I don't know what's going on with them, but Bev's going to stay home and keep an eye on them while you and I record. And we're going to try and make this like as quick and efficiently as possible. And uh, then we're going to talk with the vet in the morning and see what's going on uh, if he doesn't seem to improve. He's he's basically reacting as if he's had too much insulin and hasn't been eating enough. But then again, he's also reacting the way that a cat that has been boarded for eight days and is feeling unloved, you know. Could- Our cat did that on occasion when we would, uh, not the cat, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the cat we just let do whatever the fuck she wanted. Um, but the dog we used to board uh, when we sported Steamer, he would take a few days to get right. Just the last couple of days is when he was having problems where he, he actually just start, started getting sick when we were coming home. Um, yesterday when they were giving him shots and he he started vomiting and that was one of the signs that you know something's wrong with the insulin or whatever's going on with him that he's having a reaction and he is starting to seem a little lethargic which is what we needed to be worried about but he's still pretty responsive and we did get him to eat a little bit he's just not eating a lot right now so that's why i'm worried (laughs) yeah All right, so I was trying to fix up the theme song, but I just, I don't have enough time and we had feedback and stuff and I will get to it when I get to it and I'll just have to apologize to everybody that is involved with this because like I just now am starting to open up your clips and stuff because we've been dealing with Mac. Oh, of course, yeah. So I'm just going to, uh, (laughs) you know, do what I got to do to take care of my sick little kitty. I don't know what to, I I just, I don't know what to do and I'm I'm at my wit's end in case you can't tell and I'm telling you all of this stuff because like I'm just now starting to deal with it. Well, with cats, you know, to be 100% honest, with all the cats I've ever owned, which has been numerous in my life, um, they're pretty resilient. He's not a skin and bones animal, which is very good. He can take a bit of a hit. Um, You got a a vet appointment tomorrow. You're doing everything you can do. Well, we don't, we're going to call tomorrow. We don't know if we need to take him in yet or not. Well, okay, but you're being proactive about it. How about that? Yeah, yeah. So, that's really the crux of what you can do. Cats can unbelievably, cats can take a lot. Uh, The cat I had, uh, which was born a month before I was born, we had to put it down at the age of 21. It didn't die on its own. Uh, It was really meowing. It was like really like yelping in pain. So my mom took it into the vet and we found out the doctor looked in so many nerve endings and the spine had been bruised. He's like, he got hit. The cat got hit by a car and that's why we had to put it down or else I don't even know how much longer it might have lived. Jesus. Yeah, she held on. Yeah, she was a farm cat at first when my sister got her as a kitten. We never, you know, it, you know, even back then, declawing was a big thing. We never did it. She was an outdoors cat. She had kittens, so she had a litter at one point, uh, and she hunted. And but look, she just survived. Well, you gave me enough time to pull in the message that I was going to skip, so I think we'll be good to go. Um, All right. I just need to... I earn my key. <laughs> I just need to uh, level it and everything real quick and, and I'll be good to go. I just need to grab the fucking thing to do it. The hell is it? All right. Um, so you're rolling. I'm just going to go ahead and play a version of the theme song just to have it on here. For All right. So here we go. All right. Never mind. <sighs> <laughs> That sounded promising to start out with. Who was that talking? <laughs> that was uh, our man, Ryan, from God. Grave Shift Radio. It's a, a, <laughs> did a huge favor for me there. Um, yeah, fuck it. a great voice, too. Jesus. Yeah, hang on. That's going to be some good shit. Oh, it's, it's mostly done. I just have to kind of fix everything up. But let me just do this without playing the theme song, and then I'll do it right. All right. What the fuck is going on with this audacity? Dude, audacity's been fucking shits and giggles lately, so. God damn it. Everything is going fucking wrong when I'm trying to just get shit done. This is the worst. It's That's how it always goes. You want to get something done good and fast, and then that's when everything snags up. I bought a bar. What? Yeah. Like... A- for, a, for the house, not like a business. <laughs> okay, well, that makes me slightly less nervous then. Yeah, <laughs> right. I bought a whole business just, you know, on a whim. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, we went to housewarming and I go into the basement and he has this great wooden bar and it was so nice because the basement was wood floor and I thought it was built in. He's like, no, no, I, bu- I brought that. And I'm like, oh, nice. How much did that set you back? He goes, $175. 
I'm like, well, fuck you. And he goes, yeah, Facebook Marketplace. I'm like, you motherfucker. I, after we moved into this house, I scored the internet for two years trying to find a decent bar for like a not spending. I didn't want to spend uh, 200 bucks. I wanted to spend under 200. And I wasn't definitely going to buy a new bar because those are in the thousands and no fucking thanks. And I finally found one. Well, congratulations on getting a bar, I suppose. Yeah, well, my basement's fucking trash right now because I'm going to actually I'm moving a whole ton of shit around to change everything up and I have to and I gotta fucking then I'm gonna deep fucking wash the carpet before I move anything in because it needs it needs it after many many years all right I got it all set up let's awesome. uh, let's go ahead and do this for real now three two one all right all right, all right, all right. we get the point three two one I thought I was gonna faint with happiness your power and riches. oh wait C- cut that one all right so get rid of three yeah, I must have. How did I miss that? Hold on. Okay. That is on the island when she's coming on to the guy yeah. when she gets tagged into place. Oh, yeah, I skipped it. Sorry. Uh, it, I guess it, it wasn't all that big of a deal. It just was showing him being a real fucking creep and she putting him in his place. I don't know if we want to punch it in later. Um, do you, If you have the notes for it, yeah, and I'll just bring it back up and then I'll, I'll move it to where I guess it's supposed to go. Yeah, because it's supposed to go... Uh, okay, yeah, because I missed a whole shit ton here. Yeah, we'll go back and redo them and uh, we'll just... Uh, we'll, I'll try and fix it as best I can. All right. You want me? You want to do that now or wait till later? Just go now go now okay this is coming right after we get out of the clip and then we talk about how she jacked off a horse all right so here we go or not here we go um all right so now cut to we're gonna be back here so i'm gonna redo the line god damn it it's not playing hang on okay um so jesus christ (laughs) sometimes you really got a one um so all right fuck us movie here we go all right so uh Okay, um, I'm gonna just insert that later. Three, right. two, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. one more week that you can kick the fuck out of and make it your bitch. I had nothing else on that. <laughs> uh, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> All right, go ahead and stop recording and make sure that your waveform plays back just fine and I'm pausing on my side. All right, I have stopped.